Months now, we've been reporting about the growing issue of homelessness right here in New Hampshire. This crisis was exacerbated a few years ago, a few weeks ago, in fact, too, when a large tent city was growing in Manchester, later to be dismantled after a court battle. And along the way, several mayors from New Hampshire cities have been sending letters to Governor Chris Sununu asking for collaboration to try to ease the struggles they're seeing every single day. Two of those mayors are our guests this morning. We have George Hansel from Keene and Andrew Hosmer of Laconia. Mayors, thank you to both of you uh, for joining us here this morning. So let's dive right into this really important issue I know a lot of our viewers care about. And Mayor Hansel, let's begin with you. Uh, tell us about what you're seeing in Keene right now when it comes to this issue. When it, when it comes to homelessness, you know, what do you see every day? Yeah, so we're definitely seeing a huge increase in the number of people that are houseless. And this really started a few years ago, even prior to COVID, mm -hmm. I would say, um, and has been ramping up quite a bit since then. The cities in New Hampshire bear uh, a big part of this, um, this issue because we have all the services. And so folks are directed or coming to the cities throughout New Hampshire and, um, and we're the backstop. So if you need a place, well, if you need a roof over your head uh, and you don't have any other resort, you're coming to the city uh, for services and we're trying our best to keep up and provide those services to these folks. And hey, Mayor Hosmer, for you uh, in Laconia, what do you see every day right now? Well, it's consistent with what uh, they're seeing in Keene. You know, we've seen a threefold increase in the number of homeless, uh, mm -hmm. uh, people experiencing homeless, living on the streets, living in encampments. And uh, much like Mayor Hansel, we have uh, an awful lot of services in the city. We have a, a hospital, which people come to. And uh, we are doing the very best we can with limited resources to try and uh, give people a safe place to stay and hopefully transition them from experiencing homelessness to something more stable. You know, you've been in your communities a really long time. Is this the worst you've ever seen this issue? This is by far, far the worst I have ever seen it here in Laconia. You know, I mean, we're, the numbers are extraordinary. And, uh, you know, post-pandemic, uh, that's really when they started to skyrocket for us. It's definitely the worst that I've seen. Yeah. Um, and it's been ramping up over the last three or four years. I mean, before 2019, we had never put anybody up in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. At this point, we're putting quite a few up. And that's, that's really concerning. Not the best long-term solution, certainly. Certainly. And we really need to come up with ways to move people out of these emergency situations and into more transitional and then and then finally stable housing situations. Well, so you two are right there on the ground facing this every day. What is different about right now? Yeah, well, I think you've got a, a confluence of things. There are increased economic pressures folks are facing. There are extremely low vacancy rates among uh, uh, rental units and um, we're just so far behind as far as the amount and number of housing units that we need. I know that that's applying additional pressure. And then also, I think we're just seeing uh, an increased need. COVID created a lot, of, a lot of issues and we're still dealing with those. Yeah, Steve, you know, homelessness is just the visible tip of the iceberg of a lot of complex and deep-rooted problems in communities and the state and across the country. And it's a very complex problem. Uh, we are, as well, dealing with uh, addiction. We're dealing with mental illness issues where uh, there's a lack of affordable housing. This has been sort of an imperfect storm uh, and a convergence of these issues. And uh, homelessness is just the manifestation of this, um, uh, these complex problems. And really, we need a complex array of solutions, and, and uh, that's what we're working on. Well, so one of the things we hear is that, you know, like a lot of other problems, money is sometimes the solution. Does more money solve this problem or is it not just that? So I think you have three legs of the stool. You have the state's ability to sort of coordinate a response. You have the local municipality, the folks who are on the ground dealing with uh, the population that's being affected. And then we have really important community partners. These are social service agencies, nonprofits that are doing yeoman's work in many cases to help deal with the crisis. Every leg of that stool needs to be doing not only its part, but stretching into uh, these other responsibilities because there are definitely gaps that I see. Yeah. Money is a good start, certainly, but a coordination and collaboration and some transparency as to who's getting the money, how it's being used so that we can leverage those opportunities in the city. And we also want to measure the results. You know, money is just starting. Uh, we really need to see, are we getting the results that we need? So trying to use uh, uh, best practices and aggregating data so we can achieve the results like getting people into a stable housing situation. Mm -hmm. And I want to be really clear, at least in Keene, we're providing housing for anybody that requests it. 
Part of the issue, though, is that we have some people that don't want to go into the system for one reason or another. They choose to live outdoors and not engage. And so that's really that's a big problem because it doesn't matter how much money you throw it at a, a, a problem like that. Unless we can sort of come up with new ways to house people or move people out of the shelter system, um, more money isn't going to fix the problem. Well, I know if I'm sitting at home hearing this conversation happening, I hear more funding. You know, my immediate question is more funding for what? Are we talking for the emergency services to get people off the streets? at least in the short term, uh, more money to find people stable housing or kind of all of the above? What's needed? Well, I think, I think it's all of the above, and it needs to be stra strategically um, deployed into communities. You know, coordinated entry programs, which really triage people uh, and take the most vulnerable people and get them into immediate housing so they don't die. That's critically important to build that out. But we also need to figure out this housing shortage, affordable housing shortage that we have, that it can't be borne by the private sector in its entirety, and we have to find a way to leverage federal and, and state funds somehow so we can build affordable housing so working families have a stable and safe place to live and a place to raise their children I mean that's we desperately need employees in in, in the area uh, but we desperately need housing as well they really go hand in hand and I agree that it's all of the above but we need incentives to move people through the system into that stable housing situation right now I think a lot of these uh, these area agencies are responding to the crisis there's a huge surge in demand and so they're doing their best to just provide a bed provide a, a cot for people to stay in and convince people to come in. I mean, that's where the majority of the effort is going in right now. But long term, that's not a solution. I mean, having people stay in an emergency shelter is not good. It's not efficient. It's expensive. It's about 1800 bucks a month for a cot. I mean, we have to be doing better. And that means building affordable housing. We're about 20,000 housing units short in this state. You've reported on this a lot. And I don't see how we're going to get out of it, frankly. But we have to be working on these things at the same time. We have to take care of this em emergency, this, n this immediate need, and then setting ourselves up not to just continue to fail in the future. And that means building new housing and spreading it out throughout uh, the different communities. I think the cities alone cannot bear the brunt or solve this this crisis, and uh, and cannot set ourselves up in the long term to really provide a good solution to these folks. Well, so I want to touch on something both of you talked about. Uh, Mayor Hosmer, you first. You mentioned you know that homelessness is kind of the tip of the iceberg to to use your language, where um, you know we're seeing all these different issues come together in this. So do we need a more holistic approach in the state? Is this really a discussion about mental health and about job training and about substance abuse treatment? It, you know, all kind of all wrapped into one. It is. It's about growing wages as well. And, you know, the, it all comes, it, it is all one. And, you know, uh, uh, Senator Shaheen was a co-sponsor of a bill just recently and talking about a collaborative effort within the states and allocating funds and measuring outcomes. That's what we need. We see a workforce shortage when it comes to mental health issues. Uh, we still have opioid issues across the board and you know this is particularly impacting um, some of the most vulnerable our children our senior citizens are being affected by this so a collaborative holistic and comprehensive approach is what I I we need a and I applaud the uh, Department of um, Health and Human Services and Commissioner Weaver she's taken the initiative to make sure that we all are rowing in the same direction uh, both at the state, at the local level, at the county level, and uh, at uh, the city level. And I really appreciate that. We really need it. Yeah, Mayor Hosburn brings up a great point. I mean, I can't emphasize enough the importance of this collaboration. That means breaking down these silos. That means everyone getting on the same system and providing these wraparound services that are going to cover mental health, are going to cover medical. Um, and then obviously housing is a big part of that. And then, uh, Mayor Hansel, I also wanted to ask you about something you mentioned, that there is a perception among some that uh, many of the people who are homeless want to be in some ways. They want to be in these tents. They want to be out in the woods. They want to be left alone. Uh, is that the reality on the ground you're seeing, or is that, would you say, a, a, a minority of, of what your, your city workers are experiencing every day? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's definitely going on here. As I said, we have lots of people that are doing outreach, um, going out into the tent cities, I guess, and, and talking to people trying to tell them what services are available, trying to get them to, to come in and go to City Hall, and we're even getting to the point where we're trying to take some of those those uh, services out of City Hall because maybe that's a barrier. People don't want to go uh, mm -hmm. down and, and go into a government building. So we're trying to come up with creative ways to get people to engage and ask for help, and that's that's really difficult. That's, that's something we all need to work on. Mm -hmm. It is. I think we're, we're seeing something a little bit different in Laconia to the extent that 
people don't want to be homeless. And, and very few people I've ever bumped into say, I, I want to remain, live this nomadic lifestyle uh, and, and remain without a, a, a stable home. What they are reluctant to do is leave their tent and all of their personal belongings to seek shelter in extreme cold or extreme weather conditions. They don't want to lose their things. They don't want to have it stolen. They don't want to be uh, in an institutional setting. You know, that there's a little bit of difference there between wanting to be homeless but not wanting to be in, uh, lose their belongings or be in such a structure where they feel to confined and in one word, uh, someone used to be recently caged. They don't want to have that feeling. That makes sense. And there are some mixed messages going on, too. I mean, because of the crisis and COVID, like, we're putting people up in hotels. That's, that's like, one option. So people are trying, people who are looking for services maybe are trying to figure out, okay, what's really going on here? One thing is pretty clear. Not many people want to go into an emergency shelter yeah. environment. All right, I know you both are very pragmatic, both solutions oriented. So, so uh, I'd love to hear from each of you. You know, give us one thing that you think... Uh, either the state can be doing right now that it's not doing or that people here in the state can be doing that, that we're not really seeing right now. So one thing I think I'm really excited about, Senate Bill 110, and it starts us down a path of welfare reform. Right now, there is no compelling reason for some of the smaller towns uh, that are sending their residents to Keene or to Laconia or to Manchester for services. There's no reason to, that compels them to come to the table. And so Senate Bill 110 takes the best practices from the Welfare Officers Association and puts them into law. And what I'm hoping that does is it uh, allows a city like Keene to go go to some of these smaller towns who are sending their residents to Keene and, and say, hey, you have to come to the table. This is an issue we're all dealing with. I think until we have universal recognition of homelessness as a problem, so, because not every community sees it, until we get there, we're not going to be able to have a comprehensive, really uh, robust conversation about solutions. I think it has to be an appreciation, too, and I think George has touched on it a bit here, that the cities are really carrying the burden in, in, in this with this situation. We are the place where most of the services services exist and people tend to gravitate therefore the you know that is an extraordinary cost not only on the city but also on taxpayers and I think we have to appreciate that some of these communities that are not experiencing uh, homelessness to the extent that we are in the cities that they appreciate that they have a role to play in this as well and that we're all in this together and I think we can knock down uh, some of those walls that separate us and I think everyone can begin to appreciate we're all in this together and without some sort of comprehensive holistic solution we're not going to solve it individually as Laconia or as Keene or as Manchester. The mayors of Laconia and Keen, a really important conversation here about homelessness that we will certainly be continuing here in, in the weeks and months to come. Thank you to both of you. Thanks, Thank Steve. you.